Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I think this is a vital subject. At present, we are one of those centers and uh, who is dealing with telemedical services. What is telemedicine? It's using computer uh, telecommunications to exchange information. This is a very vital topic in our society. Everybody knows the translation of tele from Greece. It's far away, telegraph, telemed, In WHO, they consider the term in such a way that telemedicine is rendering services in healthcare when distance is a critical factor to exchange necessary information to diagnose, treat, and prevent diseases and injuries, and to provide continuous education of medical specialists to improve uh, health of population. And we are implementing everything. Every uh, medical center is rendering such services. What are the directions? They can be, well, suspended uh, telemedical consultations. Uh, they can be in online, uh, real-time mode, in case there is a council which gathers together in our center and in the other center. Usually, first, there is a suspended consultation. If there is some uh, misunderstanding, there is real-time consultation. Uh, so what else? It's tele-education, seminars, educational seminars. And then they will turn into broadcasting surgeries. Probably the last items are not so well known. It's uh, tacit control over or uh, follow up of the healthcare of uh, the administration and the staff. Uh, some mobile telemedical complexes, uh, systems of remote biomonitoring. And uh, they are used more often in the close type uh, companies where employees work in shifts. And home telemedicine. In Russia, when there is no opportunity for a person to hire a nurse or a sitter, so they put on sensors uh, census, and a person uh, who is sitting at the monitor panel can call for an ambulance. So there are developments of this sub subject of this team. Development of telemedicine started in the beginning of the 20th century. The first consultations were telegraph-based. America is also a vast country. Using telegraph, they conducted certain uh, consultations. In 1965, the first intercontinental cardiological video conference was organized. In 1974, the term of telemedicine uh, entered uh, official sources. And then the first country uh, which uh, made it very popular was uh, Norway. Of course, uh, there are many far to reach places, and they use it extensively. In 2017, the level of penetration in Europe accounted for 30%. Now, there are more than 250 telemedical projects. In 20, by 2016, the USA conducted around 1 million 
teleconsultations. And in 2017, State Duma of Russia uh, issued a law on telemedicine. What sort of other laws? This is federal law 243, 222. We know all these decrees. How are we developing telemedicine here? Of course, consultations uh, have always taken place, no matter whether they have been legal or not. Special oncological patients want to recover from their diseases, and uh, they find telephones of doctors, uh, uh, their emails and postal addresses. They sent letters and trying to understand whether uh, they would help the, uh, such patient or not. So this is eternal quality. And when a lot of letters would come to institution, the institution would uh, start thinking what to do that. So we wrote a letter to Ministry of Health uh, for, uh, where we applied for the opportunity to render uh, information services. Healthcare Ministry at last responded in June 2018 that uh, it, uh, we um, can do that. We receive a lot of letters from our patients. Half of the letters um, receive the answers right on the same day. Uh, the answers have been formulated. Questions are quite standard and answers are quite standard. And um, at present, 14 doctors of Clinic Diagnostic Center uh, well, consider these applications and answer for free. As to commercial information remote services, only 223 were rendered on a commercial basis within a year of 2018, and 19,000 uh, for free. We are the organization which has some planned indicators since nine, uh, 2019. There are planned indicators. 550 consultations have to be organized for five months of 2019. 471 consultation on a telemedical, telemedicine basis were organized. Our head doctors work in uh, hospitals and outpatient settings. They do surgeries, go to the regions with educational purposes, travel with lectures, as invited uh, specialists. So almost all uh, doctors are engaged. So we had 116 remote consultations for the same period of eight months. There are two telemedical systems that we are working with. System, federal system, federal information system. We know that same Kazashita is greater, and in Kafir system, which was created, but you need to get registered at state services portal. Federal telemedical system with same Kazashite is quite uh, user friendly. It helps to upload personal data of a patient, fill out blocks of the history, diagnosis, goal, consultations. Having read PDF files, one can understand the point. The main issue is that they are not capable to archive data in the regions, and uh, uh, it's difficult to convert radiological methods into DICOM format. 
uh, creation of histological slides can be associated with challenges. So, but we can convert any format into the one which is convenient to us. All 471 consultations were rendered within this system. The system is convenient and user-friendly. The only thing is that uh, our organizations can cooperate with third-level organizations, cardiological, oncological dispensaries. Of course, we are responsible for oncology. Now we have different applications. If they concern a neurosurgery that we are not dealing with it or orthopedics, we re send this application to the center which specializes in such issues. All consultations can have to be on a planned basis. Uh, and uh, it, it, These are not urgent situations. We cannot respond to urgent cases on telemedicine uh, platform. Yes, we've heard examples when they would ask questions through the telephone. Well, for example, let us quickly look at the patient. Well, still it's in a manual mode. Of course, later we explain uh, to the doctors how to work, what we need. The second system is developed by Research Institute or is there and uh, this system is called TMK FAIR or EGIS. It's necessary to get registered and uh, uh, confirm one's account. And you have to get registered on state services portal, Gosuslugi in Russian. And it allows to provide teleconsultations according to the schedule. This slide shows factors interfering with the development of telemedicine. Well, actually, uh, different time zones and uh, uh, unqualified uh, well, and social uh, causes, well, everything can be avoided. I do not see any problem here well, to receive code, pass, and uh, access. There is no problem. Everybody works in Yandex, Gmail. Uh, it's just the same system, it's just willingness or unwillingness to deal with something new. But the main issue is slow decision making and development of innovative laws. We often deal with, with the things that require coverage by legislation. It's actually the same MDT, the same commission that makes certain decisions because one doctor is usually incapable of answering questions. Yes, histo scans are being sent, uh, radiological images are sent, doctors would call each other, specify. So instead of one telemedical consultation, render three, four, five. Answers are sent in PDF format. So it's uh, not just one answer. There are, uh, each specialist has his own answer. Thank you. Thank you, Anna Nikolaevna. Questions? Mike. There is video broadcasting here. Thank you for your presentation. <laughs> so you described the situation when a lot of letters would be received by you. Sometimes letters are not from patients, but from relatives. How do you answer in such situations? I understand your point. And more questions. What about routing? 
those who are who take decisions so uh, how is the routing system working what is the status of the final document uh, so so the duties of uh, the doctor so what are you mean remote consultations not telemedical well I, i'm talking about the letters yes this is a crucial issue not everyone would understand how it should be done even in our institution to say nothing about the regions actually i was telling about the situation during last white nights congress i had a, a presentation well letters would come to official mail then I receive them because I'm a doctor. I'm not an oncologist, though, but I can understand a lot, having worked for 3.5 years uh, in this year. If I know that uh, I am able to answer this question, I just uh, write an answer letter. No signature, but uh, if the question is about fourth grade oncology, there is a photo of a dying person. The answer looks like that. Dear patient or representative of a patient, your situation uh, uh, you, uh, requires symptomatic therapy. And files are applied because usually there are no files. Help me, I have breast cancer. Sometimes they even do not uh, well uh, show who has it. But if there are files, I look through them. If it's not neurosurgery, no uh, liver transplantation. I sent this letter to my employee, and he resented it to a specialist who takes decisions whether to answer or not to answer. If he answers positively, yes, he will render remote consultations. There is a call to a patient made, and the patient must write a written application, send it to us, and uh, All accounts uh, for payment are submitted and act uh, that he wants to receive this uh, uh, remote consultation on commercial basis after everything is signed, the originals are sent, and uh, so we also write uh, final uh, uh, letters on official paper with signs. But although we still don't have electronic signatures in the form until you have written, you've printed out, then uh, we'll put signature stamps, uh, then scan and send. And uh, uh, My name is Karni, Alexey Karniev. I'm with the uh, Medical Association in the Crimea, Sevastopol city. So, as to communication with patients electronically, there is a conflict with legislation. How do you, well, uh, cope with this situation? Maybe you have received some permits or, because, essentially, uh, this is communication through unsecured channels. And there is information which is uh, uh, which concerns personal data and medical uh, confidentiality information. So. How do you tackle this issue? Uh, this is a vital uh, subject according to all our legislation. It, it, so it's not. In the framework of consulting, and especially not medical one, but informative one, we have the permit and um, we can we are allowed to give the consultations and uh, therefore we are allowed to use um, electronic sources for communication and uh, so we do not um, indicate um, the certain specific doctors but we as uh, uh, we leave the name of the organization only in the letters. So this is information type of uh, consulting. And before I do this, I receive all the documents with uh, the contract, with the um, agreement of the patient. I, Of course, I cannot prove that the signature was given by the patient. And um, 
um, unfortunately, the um, uh, type of work uh, that gives uh, uh, assistance from organization to organization do not allow uh, involving the patient. But when the patient wants to give the data uh, via this electronic means, then we, we are allowed to give the response because that's the patient's choice. Another question, for example, your institute uh, gives assistance to a patient and the patient uh, has the uh, biopsy samples on hands. He left back home maybe 12 hours away. We give the results, we, uh, we are allowed um, to send the results uh, via online sources and uh, the patient signs all the documents, all the agreements and consent. Uh, so, And this consent is um, saved in his medical history. So only with his consent we can uh, send these um, results.